Hi, I'm Louis. So, in terms of how I get my news, I subscribe to the New York Times and the New Yorker. So I access all of their stuff online and pay for that and really enjoy their coverage of US politics. And a lot of the time, world affairs and world culture, I think the New Yorker's in-depth feature reporting is unparalleled. I read The Telegraph and The Guardian online in Britain. And I watch the news when I can, when I remember to, on BBC. Because I think that's just a really nice way to, to finish a day in terms of, of news coverage. Of course I use Twitter, um, we all do, but at the same time, the more that I see it's kind of a bubble and an echo chamber and that a lot of things are hyped out of proportion, I feel like it's slightly corrosive to be on Twitter too much and so I'm trying to veer off Twitter a bit and veer a bit more towards the papers and the news on uh, the television. If I had one question to ask anyone who was uh, alive today in the world, you know, who would they be and what would the question be? It's a good question. I'm trying to think. Your question's good. Mine might not be. I think I'd like to speak to Jack Dorsey. He's the founder of Twitter. And I actually went to see him speak in Oxford a few months ago. But I'd like to ask him this question. I'd like to ask him why Donald Trump's tweets don't count as hate speech. Because Twitter's policy is to ban anyone or to take away tweets from anyone who is promoting hate speech. And I think so much of the rhetoric of the president-elect is hateful and it is intent on creating divisions, whether those divisions are between Christians and Muslims or Americans and South Americans or between Republicans and Democrats. And so I'd like to ask Jack Dorsey why Trump's speech isn't hate speech. And I know it's only one question, but I'm just fascinated by the idea that Dorsey now, as the head of Twitter, has so much power. I mean, Twitter has become kind of an arm of the government in a way. And I'd love to ask him how he feels about how much power he now wields. Because on the one hand, I'm sure it's exciting to him. You know, I'm sure it's cool for him to go to bed and think, my company is, is the first, or is the conduit for the president elect and the people. But at the same time, it puts a huge degree of responsibility on his head to make sure that his service isn't being used for any ills. But it's difficult because Twitter, I know, was going through a bad patch economically in the past few months, or at least before the election. And now that Twitter's fortunes have uh, surged in the wake of Trump using it so much, clearly it's hard for him to disavow Trump. So I want to ask him, really, why he lets Trump continue to spit such bile. <laughs> So I think that's my question for for Jack. And um, yeah, those are my answers to the two questions. Thank you for taking the time to watch this.